I had to build a desk, so I modified a design of a dining table that I saw built by Mark Spagnolo. There's a lot of details in this desk, and they created some unique challenges. Things like how to accomplish this reveal using a domino joiner, and the tapers on these side pieces. The legs are tapered, so these assemblies have to follow the taper of the leg. I'm working with 8 quarter lumber, so I have to break it down, so I start by joining one face and one edge, so I can rip it and plane it. To make the tapered legs, I first start by making a stencil on the CNC. I'll use this stencil to build a taper jig and also as a guide to help me keep up with the orientation of the parts when I cut them. This is a pretty simple taper jig I built and you can see there's stops for the material to flush up against. You can see here how the taper is created using this jig. I'm cutting these legs longer than they need to be, but I'll rip them to final dimension next. Working with tapers can get a little bit confusing, so I'm using my stencil to help me sort things out. I have a stop set up on the sled, so all the legs will be exactly the same. When I build this part of the frame assembly, I have to make sure that angle will follow the taper of the leg. There's a lot going on with this part of the assembly. There's tapers on the top and the bottom. I used dominoes for the joinery. I was worried about getting good alignment with all these angles, so I cut the dominoes a little bit loose. That takes care of the long end of the frame assembly, so I move on to the more challenging part on the sides. Using dominoes on two flat surfaces is pretty straightforward, but if you want a reveal, you have to use a shim. 
It gets even more complicated when you're working with angles and tapers because the shim has to follow the angle of the workpiece. I take an eighth inch roundover bit to the outside edges of the legs. I'll do the interior edges once the assembly is together. I cut a small chamfer on this piece to take the hard edge off of it. Then I give the pieces a quick initial sanding before the assembly. There's a cleat at the bottom of the work table. I use this as a reference to keep the feet flat and square. These wedges are drops from when I cut the legs. I use them with double sided tape to square up the ends so that I can get good clamping pressure. When the glue dries, I send out any minor misalignment of the parts. Then I go around the interior edges with an eighth inch roundover bit. I was really pleased with how accurate everything was with the reveal. Once the frame assembly was complete, I start building the top. As you saw in the frame, I like contrast, and maple and walnut contrast really nice against each other, so I wanted to incorporate that into the top. I wanted a really tight glue up that wouldn't show any seams, so I jointed the parts one last time before cutting the dominoes. The dominoes might add a little bit of strength, but they're mostly for alignment during the glue up.
Doing a large glue up can be a lot to keep up with, so I glued up each half separately. This also allowed me to plane each half to final dimension before I put them together. I use a scraper to remove any dried glue before I run it through the planer. Once the glue had dried, I square up the table and cut it to final dimension. I give it a final sanding and then I go around the top and bottom edges with an eighth inch roundover bit. I use a Forstner bit to create a pocket for the fasteners that will attach the top. I use mineral spirits to clean everything before I apply the finish. And now it's time for the famous monocoat pour. The idea behind these fasteners is they will let the top move during expansion and contraction so I don't go crazy when I tighten them down. I'm really pleased with how the desk turned out. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe learned something, but more importantly, I hope you got some of your own ideas. Don't forget to leave me some comments, give me a thumbs up, and please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. Thanks for watching.